As I'm sure you've probably heard, the Dallas Cowboys have become infamous for not paying their star players, and in today's video, I go over how big of a disaster this could be for the team. So while yes, ESPN does just talk about it every single day. Is it fair to describe this offseason as a disaster for the Cowboys? Absolutely. I'm going to go much more in depth. I'm going to have three kind of chapters with the three star players of Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, and of course Micah Parsons, starting off with the most important, Dak Prescott. There's a variety of opinions on how good Dak Prescott is. Either he is a playoff choker, he hasn't proven anything, or he's seen as a top 10, maybe, maybe top 5 or 6 quarterback in the NFL. And even as a diehard Eagles fan, I have to admit, I think he's a top 10 quarterback for sure. Of course, he has had plenty of playoff failures for us to enjoy, but if my team had Dak Prescott, I would be happy with it. And if you just look at the stats of a Dak Prescott offense, it's pretty good. So in his career, he's been the quarterback since 2016 and he missed one year. Their offense in total points has ranked 5th, 14th, 22nd, so it was going bad, but then they improved things. It got 6th, 1st, 4th, and 1st. So the average Dak Prescott offense is about 6th or 7th in the league in the past three years, he's gone 1-4-1. One, and one. How is this a quarterback that can't get paid? It just does not make any sense. And to take a little rewind, what has made this situation even worse is Dak Prescott, before he signed this contract, had to go through the same exact thing. And back to 2020, before Dak Prescott signed his initial deal, he played the first four years as a late round pick. He had made almost no money. Instead of just giving him a deal when he had proven himself as a good quarterback, he had dethroned Tony Romo. I mean, Jerry Jones' favorite quarterback, or one of his favorite quarterbacks, Tony Romo. He beat him out easily. Instead of paying him, they put him on a franchise tag, and then he got hurt, and then they gave him a big contract because, you know, the cost of just giving someone a franchise tag and then a second franchise tag is just crazy. So they just had to give him a contract at that point. They gave him a contract. They had to set the market. They didn't get any sort of deal from him because why would they? They made him play on the franchise tag. I got to tell you before you hire me, I don't work cheap. The exact same thing is happening this year, only he has the experience of just four years ago going through it again. So any goodwill, any trust between the two is gone. And you can hear this just listening to Dak in any interview where he talks about his contract. He goes, you know, a lot of good quarterbacks play for multiple teams and stuff like that. Oh my God, no, don't tell me everything. What? No! That's not what you want to hear from your quarterback, your leader of the team, who's supposed to just be a great stalwart of leadership and interviews that he's known for since he is such a perfect fit for the Cowboys. Now there's so much drama. And I know I've seen a lot of Cowboys fans on Reddit and on the internet saying, Dak hasn't won anything, you know, this team sucks, I don't want to pay him, let's move on. So I'll take you down a short trip of what could happen if you don't pay Dak Prescott. Now, before I get into it, let me go over your best quarterback backup option. And that is currently Trey Lance, who is one of the biggest busts in the history of the NFL and is barely making it in training camp. He's had a terrible training camp. So now that you know your options are terrible, let's see an example from the past. All right, Doc, what's going on, huh? Where are we? When are we? We're descending toward Hill Valley, California at 4.29 p.m. on Wednesday, October 21st, 2015. In Washington in the early 2000s and teens, they had this quarterback and his name is Kirk Cousins. So he played well. He didn't play as well as Dak Prescott. Their offenses weren't near the level of a Dak Prescott offense. Instead of averaging top five or six, he averaged about 10th in the NFL. But everybody knew that Kirk Cousins was a good quarterback. Nobody saw him and was like, he sucks. And I'm sure you know him now, his time with the Vikings. He's not the best in the NFL, but he is a franchise quarterback. The Washington Redskins at the time, they didn't want to pay him. They franchise tagged him. They disrespected him. 
And in the end, they said, hey, we don't think you're worth it. We're not going to pay you. Leave. Ted, you adorable little flower. What are they going to do? Quit? If they do, the company will just replace them. So he did. He went to the Minnesota Vikings. He got a huge guaranteed contract. And with the Vikings, they had some decent success, especially in comparison. Since Kirk Cousins left Washington, their best season was going 7-9 and nine and somehow winning the NFC East. Or maybe you can say their best season was going 8-8-1 eight, eight and one, uh, two years ago, but they missed the playoffs then. So either way, they have not had a winning season since Kirk Cousins left. A quarterback that is 10th in the league is miles ahead of the trash you're going to have to look for if you don't have a franchise quarterback. You're not the Packers, you can't just automatically get a franchise quarterback for free. So a list of who Washington went through since. They had Alex Smith with his gruesome injury, they had Case Keenum, they had Taylor Heineke, and they've had Sam Howell. Those have been their quarterbacks since Kirk Cousins left. I don't care how much cheaper they are, their quarterback is so bad that it doesn't matter. Their offense has averaged about 28th in the NFL since Kirk Cousins left. If the Cowboys lose Dak Prescott, they're going to be in the exact same boat. Even when Washington had the fourth best defense in the NFL in 2020, that's when they went 7-9 and nine because their offense was 25th. So yes, I do know that the Cowboys have a lot of talent on offense, on defense. Whether it's overrated or not, it's pretty undeniable they got some talent. But without a quarterback, it just does not matter. And for the Vikings, where Kirk Cousins went, if you're like, oh, average starting quarterback, you know, they don't have any success. Well, they've done better than they did if they didn't have Kirk Cousins. The Vikings have been enjoyable from an outside point of view. If you're a Vikings fan, maybe not an enjoyable team to watch, but from an outside perspective, an enjoyable team to watch. They look competent. They look like a good team. They don't look like Washington does. And I'm telling you, Dallas, if you don't pay Dak Prescott, you can easily, easily turn into the new Washington, which is why as an Eagles fan, I think that is exactly what you should do. Go ahead, don't pay him, don't pay CD, and don't pay Parsons. But really, it just doesn't make any sense. Even if you think he's what? At worst, the 14th best quarterback in the NFL, D Dallas has to pay him. They don't have a choice. Their team has so much talent on it that even with a terrible quarterback, they're going to end up 8-8. Eight eight. Then they can't draft a new quarterback. So are they going to sign a different free agent quarterback? Are they going to trade for a quarterback from a different team? This just doesn't make any sense. What's their plan? And honestly, it's gotten so bad that if they want to keep him, well, he's going to cost a premium. So what's it going to cost? And this is really up in the air. It seems like the minimum cost of Dak Prescott at this point is $60 million a year. I have to admit, I didn't see this coming. I mean, it seems like he's just not going to sign for less than that because Trevor Lawrence has proven way less. He signed for $55 million per year. Love, the Packers, just signed for $55 million per year. Way less proven. You might say he's more promising. Sure but way less, way less proven. Jared Goff signed for the high mid-50s. All these quarterbacks, Tua signed mid-50s. All these quarterbacks are doing this, and Dak Prescott thinks he's better than them. He's way more proven than them, at least. You can argue Jared Goff is more proven, but still. Dak Prescott thinks he's worth more than any of them. And he's even said in interviews that he has the responsibility to set the record for highest contract for the next guy. So he wants to raise it. He wants a record setting deal. And when some agents have been asked around the NFL what they think it will cost, they said that it will likely cost between 65 and $70 million per year to sign Dak Prescott. Boy, that escalated quickly. If Jerry Jones would have just gone back in a time machine six years ago, just pay Dak Prescott early, then we're all good. Then there's some goodwill between the two. 
then well one he would get paid less on the first deal you sign him early again this year kind of do what the eagles do or what the really good teams do and while yes it is a lot of money it's more it's less than 70 million per year and you don't have to worry about talking about this every single day you don't hear it on espn every single day and it's just so much better for the team and who cares because if Dak Prescott is bad and he's on the Cowboys and he's making 70 million, guess what? You're a bad team. If you don't have Dak Prescott and you have Trey Lance, you're also a bad team. So Jerry Jones has really screwed themselves by not paying him. And if they just need an example, just look over to Washington. Now on to the next part, on to Micah Parsons. Please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below, but back to the video. So Micah Parsons, as you know, probably the best player on the team. One of the best defenders in the NFL, and even I, who think he's a little overrated as an Eagles fan, you know, but even through these lenses, he's still one of the best players in the NFL, and you need to pay him early. And you may say, oh, he's just going into his fourth year of his deal, but you can easily pay a player at that point. For example, in Micah Parsons' draft class, Trevor Lawrence has been signed, Jalen Waddle has been signed, Panay Sewell has been signed, Devontae Smith has been signed, a bunch of people have been signed. It is totally possible if the team wants to do it, they could pay him now. Micah Parsons, of course, wants to be the highest paid non-quarterback, which is going to cost the team in the mid-30s of millions of dollars. But if they wait until next year, guess what? he still wants to be the highest paid non-quarterback, so the price would just continue to go up. It just makes no sense not to pay him sooner. Just pay him now. Pay him yesterday. Pay him at the end of the last season. And if you want an example, if you're like, hey, he's a defensive end, an edge rusher. It doesn't matter nearly as much as a quarterback. What if we just don't pay him? We string him along. For some reason, you're a Cowboys fan or a random NFL fan who doesn't think you need Micah Parsons. Well, just look across the division once again to the Eagles with Reggie White. When they got rid of Reggie White in free agency because they didn't want to pay him, the Packers then went on along and won the Super Bowl. So <laughs> the Eagles didn't win the Super Bowl until 2018. You, when you have a gold star, top 10 at their position, player in the NFL who is young, who you drafted, Sign them early, create a good relationship, work with them on the deal, and then if you want to sign them again for their next contract, they'll work with you then. And it just seems so simple. And before I get to CD Lamb, I did hear Jerry Jones saying a few things. I did hear him saying that they're all in on this year, which, um, yeah, I don't know if I believe that because you haven't done anything. But I also heard him say that he's timing it like the stock market. So what is exactly is he expecting? Is he expecting the salary cap to go so far down that quarterbacks and star defensive edge rushers are getting paid less money? That That's the only thing that would make sense is that for some reason, Jerry Jones thinks there's gonna be a significant decline in the salary cap, which would mean there's a significant decline in the revenues of the NFL, which just doesn't seem to be happening. Maybe it will stall out. But then you would just give him the deal anyways. There's, it just doesn't make sense. And you have to wonder, yes, the Cowboys are getting all these good players, but it doesn't seem like they're treating them well. They're not signing them to contracts early. I just seems like, is this a good up? It just seems like, is this a good front office or not? So I do know, of course, back to Washington. It's back to Washington's old one where it was terrible, it was toxic, and you drafted bad players. But it is not a top 10 front offense in the NFL. It just, I, I don't know what's going on. It, Jerry Jones does not seem to be a good leader. I don't, I would hate to be under him. If he was my boss and he was like, yeah, I'll pay you the absolute least I can and you know, maybe in three years I'll give you a raise. I I would hate it and I would want to go somewhere else. So I don't know why he thinks he can do this 
with his best players. It's one thing to do it with these low level players who is kind of treated like that by everyone. But when you do it with your stars, it's completely different. And then finally, CD Lamb. So there's a chance by the time you've watched this, he's already been signed to a contract extension. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He already waited too long. It's already too late. So CD Lamb is currently in his fifth year option. So technically, he could play out this year and he could get franchise tagged next year. And he actually technically could get franchise tagged the following year. So they semi do have him for three years. But one, as I said, this would be a terrible relationship with a position that's known for being a diva position. Wide receiver. Like, of course he's going to complain. He's a wide receiver. And for good reason, at this point, he's completely underpaid. So he's going into his fifth year option. Of course, he's 25 years old. He's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL last year. Of course, Eagles fan, once again, that game's a little overrated. But, you know, still. Top 10 wide receiver in the NFL, no argument from anybody. They might say, oh, he's top five, he's top three. But, you know, top 10, undeniable. So, you have it, you drafted him. Guess what? It's time to pay him. And really, you should have paid him last year. Be like the Eagles, they signed Devontae Smith. He was in the fourth year of his deal. They had the fifth year option if they wanted it. They didn't. They wanted to sign him long term deal, sign him cheaper, and the Eagles got a really good deal with him because they gave him money early, they worked with him, and they like each other. And guess what? Next time, the same thing will happen. And it will let Howie do whatever he wants with the cap, move it all around, the players will be all for it, but that's only if you have a good relationship going both ways. So we've all been waiting on CD's contract this year because he's in the last year, of course. And he is making $17.9 million this year, but for a wide receiver, this is severely underpaid. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't exercise the fifth year option, of course you should. But then you need to extend him on top of this. And really, you needed to extend him before Justin Jefferson went out there and destroyed the market. Now, he's going to want roughly the same, maybe a little less, maybe a little more than Justin Jefferson if you pay him this year. If you pay him next year, he definitely wants more money than Justin Jefferson because he waited a year and he thinks of himself as the same level. So, what are you doing? Like, you could have signed him for less last year. You could have signed him for several million dollars less last year, and this would not be a news story. And, once again, another example, because I want to give some great examples of what could go wrong, and this is a little different, because the best example I could think of was Tyreek Hill. So Tyreek Hill, best wide receiver in the NFL, course was on the Kansas City Chiefs won Super Bowl with them they did great he wanted a ton of money the Chiefs were like eh, I don't want to give you a ton of money they then traded him to the Miami Dolphins and they got a lot for him and since Tyreek went to the Dolphins he's been the best wide receiver in the NFL he's exploded their offense he's carried their offense when he's not on the field it's terrible when he's on it it's really good and you may be saying hey the Chiefs won the Super Bowl back-to-back -back years without him and they still have a good offense. Well, they have Patrick Mahomes. They have Travis Kelsey. And guess what? If you're not willing to pay Dak Prescott top 10 money in the NFL, that means that you think he's nowhere near Patrick Mahomes. So if you have a quarterback nowhere near Patrick Mahomes, then you need to give him weapons. So this is essentially saying, hey, we don't think our quarterback's that great, and we're not sure if we want to give him his one legitimate top tier weapon. It just makes no sense. And if you want to see a team that has done this the exact opposite, just look at the Eagles. Everyone on the Eagles offensive side of the ball has been extended for a long time. Jalen Hurts has been. Mylotta has been. Lynn Johnson's on a decent sized contract. He's getting a little old, so he's thinking about retiring at the end of the deal. But if he wants money, Howie will give it to him. Devontae Smith is on a good size deal. Saquon now is on a good size deal. Everyone on the Eagles offense is on a good size deal. Everyone on the Eagles defense is young. Other than Slay, who's, you know, we're done with him after this year. But other than Slay, everyone on their defense is a young guy. I mean, whether it's the corners or the defensive line, they're all young. Or are on long-term contracts. And that is with Howie Roseman, who's seen as one of the best GMs in the NFL versus Jerry Jones, who's seen as like a weird old man. Versus Jerry Jones, 
versus Jerry Jones, who's seen as kind of a weird old man. So, in conclusion, I don't know what Jerry Jones and the Cowboys are doing. When you have top tier talent, you give them top tier money, and you don't want to fight with them because if you do, eventually they're going to get fed up and they're just going to leave. And the biggest and the biggest concern, if I was a Cowboys fan, would be losing Dak Prescott and going into quarterback purgatory and potentially getting stuck with a list that goes Alex Smith, Case Keenum, Taylor Heineke, and Sam Howell. Or something of similar sorts. What if it's worse? What if they have to play Trey Lance? You're going to have this amazing team squandered by a terrible quarterback. And even though he might not be your favorite, even though you're like, oh, he's not Patrick Mahomes, of course he's not. But he's good enough that you have to pay him. You just, you just don't have a choice. Top 10 quarterbacks do not grow on trees. So when you find a tree that has top 10 quarterbacks, you need to water it. And um, anyways, same applies to every position that I've talked about. The three stars, there's no reason why they should not all be paid for the next four or five years at this point. But if you like the video, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. And I will see you later. Please consider subscribing 